What's up, boxing fans, and welcome to Podcast 37. Take a listen as we sit down and chat with heavyweight legend Frez Akendo. Y'all know the vibes. They say one of them times you can slide by what you say that you're gonna do. Put your money up, run that phase, I'm just showing proof. You know the vibes, huh? Ain't got no ways up in my guys. I clown in the day, gone in the mind, yana. I've been on fire lately. Train my spirit, mind and body daily. Victory is sweet, that's the science, baby. It's only right we represent from Tampa to Tally. And keep the pressure on these eyes, they call you lacking. Like Till you flopping on the canvas, I'm bombing and weaving. Unleashing the fury on your face while the audience screaming. Hope they got great seats or the pay per view. Let's get the breakdown from JDJ and Q. You know the vibes. What up, boxing world? It's Boxing Vibes TV coming at you, trying to give you the best analysis in boxing on YouTube. You Spotify? Spotify, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, you Stitcher, Stitcher, Red Circle, you name it. All right, so go ahead and uh, check us out. We're down a man today. Q's not in the building, but we have a very, very special guest today. Mm-hmm. Long time heavyweight contender. Legend. Harden warrior. Mm-hmm. Frez Okendo. Okay, no. yeah. Thank you for being on the show today, brother. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. So we got a little something today. Uh, we got to start us off with the uh, quote of the day. Yeah, I got to, you know, it's customary, you know, all of you all watching or listening, you know, we're always going to do a pod quote of the day. Now, today's pod quote is, Y'all must have forgot. P. Cole in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that's from my man, Roy Jones and, Jr. And that's not must of. That's, that's must of. M-U-S-T-A. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's Pensacola talk. Uh, y'all know must that. Right. Now, we also have a very special sponsor today. And this episode is brought to you by RX Water, the official water of the WBC. For supreme medical grade hydration, check out RX Water using the hashtag DrinkRx. All right. Hey, Q's not here. We got to tell him what to do, man. Yeah, we got to tell him what to do. Please like, subscribe, share, all the above. Do, do that. Uh-huh. Go ahead and do that. Now, we're going to jump right into it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Get our him. man, Fred. All right. So, our first question for you we have. Now, we know that you had over 100 amateur fights. Now, tell us how do you feel being someone who had over 100 amateur fights and then also started off your career 22 and 0. So tell us, what do you think about these fighters who come in supremely hyped up with these massive amateur records but have done absolutely nothing? I'll go ahead and name drop, like an Alexander Eustick with 17, 18 fights. Right, right. I'll go ahead and Chico. So so tell us, what do you think about uh, those fighters who everybody's highly touting their amateur career before they even have one or two professional fights? Yeah, and that's the thing about, you know, boxing, you know, I mean, especially amateur boxing, you know, it gets you ready for the pros. But to go straight to the world-class level of fighting, you know, from the amateur Olympics and all that to the world champ, I mean, that's going to be rough. Boxing mm-hmm. amateurs, two different beasts. I mean, again, you know, Lomachenko, you know, he was pound for pound until, uh-huh. you know, my Latino brother took care of business. Hey, T on the house. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, a couple of gold medals and then he turned pro. And you can see uh-huh. he fought a tough, rugged it. You know, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, so, so, Cito? Uh, 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 Salido. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and, Orlando uh, yeah, Salido. Yeah, Orlando Salido. Mm-hmm. And he beat him, you know, convincingly. Yeah. Know, and and uh, again. And know, that was an older Salido, too. Yeah, right? exactly. Mm-hmm. Salido. yeah, exactly. So, right. and then once he started, you know, uh, dominating these, you know, these pretty good champions and, mm-hmm. you know, with only several fights, you know, they started pretty much promoting Pretty much to the boxing world, to the amateur box, you know, you can turn pro. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can fight for the championship with only one or two fights. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not the message you want to send to me. Right. Yeah. You up and coming generation. Right. Yeah. So with, with 300, like, so, so do you think something like mm-hmm. 300, do you think they're, mm-hmm. at what point do you think they're honestly still learning something that will really translate to the pro game? Or do you or, or like, do you think the amount of three hundred? Yeah, right. do you think that prepares you at like anything ex- like you know give you an extra edge when you get mm-hmm. into like that they- amount? Right. Okay. For instance, I'm gonna put uh, uh, Lopez and Lomo fight. Mm-hmm. Okay, Lopez was young, you know he was talented, but remember when he turned pro, 
he had a nice, you know, amount of fights. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he got the and he's super young. Lomo, you know, he turned pro and only had two, three, you know, two a fight or so. First fight, world championship. Mm -hmm. And now you see this kid, you know, Lopez, you know, did the right way, went through the hard work and sacrifice and got him 20 something, an old win. Mm -hmm. And I gave him the edge before the fight. People thought I was a little crazy, but I know boxing, you know, and, and not only that style makes fights, it's just preparation right. for that mm -hmm. world right. championship, the elite mm -hmm. level. You got to have a lot of good, you know, you know, pro world class fights, and and that's why I gave the edge to uh to Lopez. So it sounds like you're saying that it's totally different than the amateurs. <laughs> yes, yes, and that, yes. And that's, yes. And, and, that's, what, and that's like. what that's what mm -hmm. a lot of people say, but it mm -hmm. didn't stop them from hyping up like right. A right. Usyk, and, and and you mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if you caught the Usyk uh, Chisora fight. Did did you were you able to? I, I heard about it. Um, I seen little clips of it, and I heard that you know it could have been a draw. I mean, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and again, we're not talking about. You know, world class Jasora, who's you know had a lot of wars and been mm -hmm. KO'd, and but yeah, he gave Usyk the blues yeah, yeah, pretty right, much. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Usyk was supposed to put a you know yeah. a stamp, you know, right. in the heavyweight division, and, and once again, you know, after the Witherspoon fight, now this fight, mm -hmm. that's not a good look. I mean, right. hey, if he's talking about fighting a Joshua, Deontay Wilder, right. or Ortiz, he's because Sora was in his chest all night long. Yes, he was yes, in all yes, night yes. Long. <laughs> yes. So it could have, you know, went either way. And mm -hmm. um, man, I'm happy for him. But uh, they're hyping you sick. You know, he's right. been cruiseway all his career. Now he's trying to, you know, be in, in the big boys league, and mm -hmm. that's a dangerous zone for him. Mm -hmm. So, so speaking of earning it, you know, you you've been in s with some memorable guys. I mean, James Tony. Evander Holyfield, David Tua, uh, John Ruiz, uh, you know, a slew of champions. Um, I, I don't know if it's right. Who was your toughest fight? Now, I know there's a bit of um, a lot of people thought you beat uh, Evander. Uh, I'll, I'll throw that out there. But who was your toughest fight? My toughest fight was against this Olympian. Uh, actually, it was in 1999, January... Six, I forgot. Mm -hmm. It was the Mike Tyson versus Francois Bota, you know. Okay, I remember that. Okay. So right after he knocked out uh, Francois Bota, I was the swing bout. Okay. And uh, they pit me in against the uh, 1996 Olympic bronze medalist Duncan Duckaworry. Okay. He's from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, he was supposed to, he was built like Mr. Olympia, 6'5", 240. So I was pretty much a, a, a sacrificial lamb for him, even though I had a good record undefeated. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, a fight that was very, very hard. The kid hits hard. You know, he was like 15 and 0 with like 14 first round knockouts. Well, 15 knockouts, but 14 of them in the first round. So Oof, wow. they thought, Oof. you know, I was going to be one of those, you know, lay over. Yeah, put, put him out there. Right. Put him out there. <laughs> exactly. So this kid went from round one, right. came out smoking, and uh -huh. two, three, you know, he's a heavyweight, 240 pounds. Right. But once I got around five, six, started knocking him down, you know. My skills, you know, with all the experience, like you said, from the amateurs, yeah. right up to the pros, and I was coming up gradually from from uh, four rounds to six rounds to eight. Brought you and, so long. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I was very prepared, you know, for what he had coming. You know, I weathered the storm, and and he hit me with some bombs, and thank God I was in great, great shape. I was weather, I was weathering the storm. You know, he hit me so hard in the forehead. I mean, to this day, there's a picture on my Instagram page. I had a big old knot, and, and mm -hmm. that was, you know, the hardest hit I had. But I ended up dropping him in the, in the um, I believe in the eighth round, and uh, yeah, the rest was history, and that's when the whole boxing world took a notice of me. Mm -hmm. Took notice. Now, yeah. okay, <clears throat> so you've been in with all these uh, uh, great champions, great contenders in their time. Um, Mike Tyson's doing an exhibition. Roy Jones is doing an exhibition. Mm -hmm. Holyfield is me mentioned about doing an exhibition. I know you guys had a. Everybody, cool. everybody's saying scoop all the time. Right. Everybody's saying scoop right, all the time. Right, right, right. I'm with it. Everybody's, oh, turning, yeah. everybody's turning back the clock. <laughs> right. Um, is that something you thought about doing? And I, I personally would like to see the Holyfield fight. But, I, I mean, mm -hmm. who who would be on your list if you, were, you know, wanted to come back? Well, I'd love to do it, you know, with Mike. You know, if he gets past Roy. And, of course, Holyfield, you know, he still got okay. some business to handle. Even though it was a lot of controversy to that fight, <laughs> hey, hey, so, so I like you want some of that smoke. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, right. You, right. you did outland him, right. you know. What I'm saying right. you were a busier oh, fighter. Oh so. yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, you know, Holyfield, you know, it was a lot of controversy. I don't know if you guys heard about his steroid information. I mean, you know, second. I mean, all his controversial, you know, 
fights, like when he fought Michael Moore, and mm -hmm. he started yeah. having heart problems and other issues, and you know that's caused from a lot of. You already know when I fought Chris Bird, you know he was really a heavy. I mean, he must have been doing something to get that yeah. that big, mm -hmm. and he was a natural middleweight back then, and. And I still outpointed him, and I knocked him down. And they, you know, Don King, the fix was in, and he knew that was my last fight. Right. But of course, they gave it to him. And uh, unfortunately, that was a black guy of boxing. That was George Foreman's last, you know, t uh, being a telecast, you know, um, uh, one of those ring announcers for HBO. And right, right. yeah, it, it was a black guy for boxing. And here I am to this age, you know, I'm still active. I'm still, you know, one of the top heavyweight contenders. I mean, the WBA. That's a different story. You know, they ended up taking me out the rank as recently, and it's not my fault. You know, I fought Chigaev 2014. I'm yeah. one of the longest okay. reigning heavyweights in history. You know, this is 2024 decades being top 10. You know, it's unheard of. So, you know, I still got some unfinished business with the WB. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, Chigaev and uh, Chechnya. Oh, yeah, man. and then all of a sudden, you know, I was supposed to fight him in the rematch. He ended up deciding to retire in 2015. <laughs> he didn't want no part of me. So the title was vacant. I was supposed to fight... Uh, the winner of Chigayev and Lucas Brown. Uh, Lucas Brown knocked out Chigayev, and then I was supposed to fight Lucas Brown. He tested positive for steroids. Oh, so now okay, 2000, okay. that was 2016. Now 2017, the, the title is vacant. And I'm supposed to fight. Let's go, champ. You know, Shannon Briggs was big mouth. You know, he does all his yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, outside of the ring. I do it in the ring. And, uh, again, days before the fight, getting ready to fight at the Hard Rock Casino in Hollywood, down, you, know, down, you know, down south of Florida. He ended up testing positive. All right, here we go again. The WBA, you know, put me in the spot again. Mm -hmm. they end up, you know, having another fight, a fight, fight, you know, on my on my spot, you know, at the Southern District of New York when okay. I won my federal case against uh, Chigai for them, you know, cause they, they end up not paying paying me my whole million dollars. I don't know if you, you're familiar with that fight when I fought in Grizzly Chechnya. You know, they was you know supposed to pay me a million dollars, and they did, so I had to take them to trial, and I won. So uh, ne ne next you know, you know, the WBA ended up putting Houston off versus Manuel Char. All of a sudden, you know, bypassed me of my federal rights. When I won my case, mm -hmm. the federal, Southern District of New York, the, the federal judge, she ended up telling the WBA, this is the manager. So they said, no, you, 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 you'll you get the winner of, of uh, Manuel Char and Houston off. I'll make sure you get the, you know, the title shot. So it, it, it's just a lot of controversy, you know. Biz, business, and, and, business and, and here it is, you know. Used to, I mean, Ch Char won, and he was all roided up. He getting ready to fight. He test positive, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And now it's like over a half a decade of my career gone because of you know this or, you know association, the WBA, mm -hmm. and their cronies, you know. And I don't know if you guys familiar, but check Google my name. You see all the controversy, and you know I'm fighting for what's right. You know I'm a poster child of what boxing's right. supposed to be. You know a clean sport. You know protecting mm -hmm. us, the fighters, <laughs> not right. your pockets, not right. the commission. You know the association's pockets. Right. So so <clears throat> speaking of you know controversy, uh, I do want to um, jump into the current heavyweight controversy. There's been some. Um, Deontay Wilder released a video. Um, I guess a couple of weeks ago went viral with some real accusations. With some real accusations, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, you know, anything from an egg weight in his glove, you know, he, he's had a lot of reasons why mm -hmm. he lost that fight. Um, we, we kind of did a, a segment and, you know, I was a fan initially, you know, I knew he had some deficits as far as, you know, yeah. skill, skill mm -hmm. level, but he, you know, he had that guy, God given power, that yep. right hand, you know, send you to sleep. Right. Um, but I started looking back, right. And I, I counted, you know, he's fought. 36 rounds in his past four fights. And I want to say he's lost 29 of them, right? But wow. he's... And, and you going back to Luis Ortiz. I'm going back to his two fights with Luis Ortiz. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and so if 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 you just look at him, the odd test, he's, mm -hmm. he's, you know, only won seven rounds. Last 36 rounds, he's boxed. Um, what is your perspective on the whole controversy? Do you think there's something there? Or do you... Or are you just kind of thinking... His egos, uh, Deontay Wilder's egos bruised, and he's just needs to get a fight before you know too much gets said, and he's not he's talked himself out of a uh, a trilogy with Fury. Well, you mentioned it, ego. You mm -hmm. know he's used to knocking everybody out. You know he had Plan B at all times, but what, what happened with Plan B? Don't, I mean, you always got to have A, B, C. I mean, you got to have a, always mm -hmm. a, you know something. You got to have skill or something. You know the lost art, which is defense. Unfortunately, you know he was so inclined of offense, offense. That defense 
you know, wasn't there when he fought Tyson Fury b- both times. Um, I think he, he won the first one, but the second one he made a great mm-hmm. statement and won it. You know, not controversial. It was unanimous and stopped him. And, it, you know, it's just said that now he's coming up, you know, with the clothing, you know, with the with the water spike, you know, with old Trinic, uh, Mark Brina, who's an iconic mm-hmm. gold medalist and very well respected in the boxing community. And for him to say those derogatory things against, you know, those people that had his best interest, um, it, it was not right. It was not right. And to, the, to that point, um, with the whole, <clears throat> with you being a legend and a vet in the game, mm-hmm. can you please uh, uh, pull back the curtain for us mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. is it really that dirty to where fighters really have to watch their water? Really watch, uh, you know, right. when we hear him say that about He's, Mark Yeah, Breeden, he got his water spiked. Yeah. You know, it, is it really that dirty? Have you ever encountered any type of uh, situation where you got to tuck your water away, you know? No, no, no. That that, that don't exist. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I'm from a generation of the early 2000s. You know, where we had some good heavyweights. You know, uh-huh. we had the Klitschko. We yeah. had Lehman Brewster. We had mm-hmm. Bird. We had, right. you know, we had some killers. Holyfield, you know, we... we you know, James Tony, and I, and I mm-hmm. fought them all in that era. And no, man, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a low blow right. in boxing. As a black guy, I mean, he mm-hmm. should not, he, he should just be quiet and don't keep shooting himself in the foot. And that's going to degrade his popularity, not only his popularity, but, you know, his instinct of how he thinks about the sport that's poss- that mm-hmm. the negative thing could possibly happen. No, no, not, not in the day. The commission do their job, you know, they check mm-hmm. the raps and all that. You know, they were saying that Tyson Fury you know, had what some bricks in his hand, like whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, it just—it probably felt it, like he had bricks right. in his hand. <laughs> right, right. I mean, getting popped all the time. Right. Your eardrum it, busts. I mean, your ears right. and bleeding all over the place. Yeah, so, yeah, it, man. It's, it's no excuse. And, and it's interesting because um, we we've had this discussion numerous times about this, and. I, I told them that he gets one pass from me as a fan. I, I was a wild fan. He's wearing thin with me. You know, he gets one pass. Uh, but um, uh, the interesting thing is, you brought it up. For me, I was most disappointed by the Mark Breland comments. Okay. Now, some of the Fury accusations, I mean, I don't really believe they're true. Mm-hmm. But then again, I do remind them that Fury blamed a positive test on eating wild boar. <laughs> You're right. That's some Canelo stuff. Right, 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 right. I remember. Right. I remember. So, right. Me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. Me. So, so we'll see true. how that all pans out. Now, yeah. my last question for you is: I don't know if you heard. Um, with the WBC, they have now created a new uh, weight class, Super Cruiser weight. Um, and now I, I think know, it's called Bridger. Bridger. Right? Yeah, it's different. Yeah, right. Bridger, mm-hmm. Bridger. Oh, Bridger. name after that kid who almost got mauled by you know saving his little sister yeah, from that yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Exactly. Oh, that kid's mm-hmm. iconic, man. Yeah. I, I, man, God bless that kid. Yeah. So, so being someone who's a six two, um, and they might not have considered you a giant, right? But yeah, you, I was but, but, but you got in there, you tangled with the giants. Yeah. Yep. How, how do you feel about that new weight class? I think and, it's two twenty four limit, right? Right. Two twenty four yeah. limit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how do you feel about that weight class? And do you think it will take off? And it, it will kind of pop. Man, in, that in is interesting, world. you know. And you know, I remember to have, you know say like the WBA used to have a junior heavyweight or mm-hmm. whatnot. But man, that's that's good for boxing. I mean, I I, I love to. Be one of the first champions to win that prestigious green belt. Okay, um, you know, super okay. cruiser, uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we got a first fight, right? Here. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, I heard Tarver, you know, has expressed some uh, also, you know, interest in. Okay, fight, you know, Tarver, okay. he's still trying to get it in, but the politics, unfortunately, like myself, mm-hmm. you know, I've been mandatory for the last for over half a decade, and here I am still you know, trying to get that title shot at WBA, right. mm-hmm. and um, you know. Uh, the WBC, I got a lot of good, you know, history with them. They got mad respect for me, and actually, Mauricio's dad, uh, Jose, God bless his soul, he always took care of me, and he was the first one to give me my top five world ranking, top four actually. Okay, okay. After I knocked out the black man, so his father always believed in me and uh, gave me a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the green light if I was ready to fight for that WBC mm-hmm. championship. But like, like I said, the politics of boxing. 
you know, it gets a little rough. Mm-hmm. But man, that that that'll be good for man. That'll be interesting for boxing. Uh, uh, I, lo- I love for that. Uh, okay. See, 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 yeah. nah, nah, that's interesting. <laughs> some, some people love it. I, all right, so all right, so one of the things they're talking about is Deontay Wilder, Usyk trying to make that fight. Mm-hmm. So one one thing I thought about was um, I don't know if you remember. I hope I'm not mispronouncing it. David Hay versus Nikolai Value. He was like seven foot, three hundred pound dude. Yeah, I don't know if you see David Hay. We follow him on Instagram. You know, we're friends, personal friends for many many years. Even when he was cruiserweight. Okay. I used to spar with him at the, in uh in a, in a gym in Florida, South Florida boxing gym. We used to spar a lot, and um, I remember me Audrey Harrison. He was an Olympic gold medalist, and I remember seeing David spar with him. I'm like, man, I like to spar with this kid. And this kid was just a cruiserweight, but you know, had the even speed and, and power for that. You know, being small frame, and I ended up sparring with him. Did real good, hung in there, and man, we've been became real close friends. So. so on Instagram, he just posted his anniversary against mm-hmm. that fight. Like, okay. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh-huh. And I commented, and he, he responded, man, Fraz, those instructions you gave me, that advice worked, and I, you know, he thanked me so much for that, you know, for that advice, because I was uh, a Valois chief sparring partner. I was in okay. Germany. Oh, yeah, 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 training okay. for that fight. Oh, okay. Uh, so I knew David <laughs> already. Knew, uh, yeah. Okay. So I told David, hey, man, you got to do you this. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was in camp with him, you know, he has problems with, with Movers and good jab, moving, moving. Mm-hmm. You know, he really, you know, he's, he's a monster. He stay in there, and get hit. He's gonna stop you, you know. But uh, yeah, David took my advice and he put it on his Instagram, and the rest is history. Yeah, man, I, I applaud him because, you know, to this day, you know, I was, you know, I felt happy for him because he, he made history. You know, he fought a seven foot, three hundred pound guy, and he just moving up from cruiserweight, you know, winning the undisputed cruiserweight championship and winning the heavyweight. That was impressive, you know. It, it, it was very impressive. I, I, yeah. thought, I thought he was going to get mauled. Definitely. I thought he was going to get mauled. So, mm-hmm. but, but that brings me to my point. One of the things I, I said to them, and this was just a conversation off the show, I said that division might take away that little David versus Goliath matchup just because you might have a champion at that bridger weight that's comfortable and not, you know, not, not trying to climb that mountain. And, um, and I, what I told them is that, man, they'll still fight both. Yeah, yeah, super cruiser, and they're still no, no, right. yeah. You do have a point. That is that you're right. You're right, and 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 you got a good point there because yeah, Dave, David Hay won't be able to have that spectacular victory against, mm-hmm. which is very interesting. You know, it's just nowadays, you know, with the Deont- Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, you know, these six foot seven. I mean, you know, these guys are giants. Fury, yeah. I mean, they're, mm-hmm. yeah, they're. Man, I mean, it was skills, you know. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. like, these guys got skills, you know. So mm-hmm. that's a good point you brought up. You know, it might take the spark of that. So, you know, history, history will tell. You know, it, it might create more super fights. You know, you might yeah. have two champs, meeting. right? Yeah. You got a right, chance, right, right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's that's a possibility. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so it'll be good for the both. But either way, both. I, I think it'll, it'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's history. And I got one last uh, question. We got to show some love to the ladies, all right? Oh, so, absolutely. So ladies I want to know, what are your thoughts when all the rumors were swirling around about Clarissa Shields facing oh, Layla Ali Ooh. and her coming out of retirement? Oh, I remember that. So, so, so what, what, give us your thoughts on that. I mean, again, Layla Ali hasn't fought in years. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, she already put her imprint on boxing. And she's the daughter of one of all, I mean, the greatest – Fight in history, Preach. so mm-hmm. so you know it was a good little run up to publicity, and you know Layla Ali got tons of publicity, and she was come on, you know it's mm-hmm. the past. I mean, this is your generation. That's her generation. Keep it like that. Right. Yeah, I that's... bring her back, and you know she had kids and all that. You know family, and mm-hmm. I don't think it would be good for boxing. I mean, that, 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 you know what? I'm glad he. Uh, that's exactly. So we had this argument. Oh, wow. We had yeah, this argument, really? and I that's told them that same exact thing. I'm okay. like, even if you Google Layla Ali, yeah. they they have her under TV personality. They didn't yes. even say she was a boxer right. anymore. Right, so, right, so, right. So, so yeah. my thing about it was, it, you know, if she, had, I think she's been out of the sport for like seven, eight yeah. years or something yeah. like that. Almost long. a decade. Yeah. Yeah, and she's you know, she has kids. She's yeah. you know she she's you know, out of the game and, and for, for really to, to kind of, you know, stoke that fire. I mean, don't get me wrong. It'd be good numbers, right? Oh, yeah. But, but, hey, hey. but just to watch that fight that right. you, you you never want to see, you know, a fight like, a, you know, legends period 
you know, yeah. not that legend anymore. And then you know it's a, not not going to be a competitive fight just because she hasn't picked up the gloves in so long. Yeah. It, so it, in my position on the West, I, uh, I totally understand okay. the whole she's been out of the game for a minute. But yeah. me and my other friend Q, who, who's not here, we're talking about if the bag was right. If the oh. money was right, <laughs> I mean. if, 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 if they could guarantee these ladies about ten million. Now look, I, it's now, now be a different story. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what I mean, that's like yeah, yeah, playing yeah. a lottery, you know. Right. I mean, hey. that's a different story. Well, yeah, I mean, come on, everybody's gonna go after right. that. But the, the, the thing is, it has to be the attention there for. And I, yeah. I was questioning I, I whether the money right. was yeah. gonna be there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think the money because she's pretty financially come to find out she's successful, mm-hmm. and um, her family. Uh, Okay, I don't think her. They really hurting for that. Yeah, right? no. yeah so. so you got a point there, man. Well, we really appreciate it. Most this, definitely, I, I we mean, appreciate you so much. I, 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 this is this has been a big moment for us. We're a young mm-hmm. show and having you know a, you know a heavyweight legend. Literally, <laughs> when, when, when when they said Fresno, mm-hmm. I said, "Okay, no." <laughs> <laughs> thank you, John. Yeah, yeah, I, it was just a pleasure to have you, man. We mm-hmm. want to thank you. Thank you um, and uh, again, y'all follow us on uh, follow us, subscribe, I- IG, subscribe, Spotify, YouTube, mm-hmm. we're everywhere. So we appreciate you, friends. Uh, come back anytime, oh, absolutely, all the mm-hmm. time. Thank <laughs> you, John, uh, for having me here and spreading the good word, and letting the people know uh, in boxing what's going, what's been up with me, and you know the politics of sport. And uh-huh. again, you know, I'm a poster child of what's good for our up and coming fighters. And any advice for you, young man? I'm here. Yeah. All right. right. You appreciate, you. Pre- appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate so time, much. Man. Thank you. Appreciate you. JD, you, want, you got anything else? Nah, man. We just we just thank you for showing up. All we right, thank cool. you for sitting down with us and being so gracious. Awesome dude. Cool. Uh, Layla, I'm your fan. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. We out of here. Thank you, friends. Right. Friends, I'm Kendall on the field. We out of here, man. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, champ. <Jeff. laughs> thank you, my little bros. God bless. <laughs>